Okay, you guys, can you hear me now, you guys? Okay, great, awesome. Okay, thank you, Dave, for pointing that out. So, hello, guys, I'll start again. Welcome to live training, and welcome to Num Turbo 180 Mans. Okay, so today I'm playing a bunch of $4.50 180 Mans, Num Turbo. Alright, so we have 50 minute blind levels, and we all start with 1500 chips. And the tournament we're watching right now is, of course, a $4.50 man, and we have 5000 chips. So we're doing quite well so far. So hopefully we can keep it up. Bigfoot 2212, this is the only non turbo 180 man in the micros, right? That is correct, Bigfoot, yeah. There are some 90 mans, but no, there's no cheaper 180 mans. Which, you know, I think that may be a good idea for stars to maybe do that. Who knows? A6 of hearts, guys. I'm going to fold this hand. I've managed to flop a flush on a different table. So we're going to bring that table up, see what happens. Alright, never mind. It doesn't want to show us this table, so. I'll just have to tell you guys how I got on with my flot flush. Whilst I switch back to. this table. Hey, Greg. Chris, blow us a raspberry. No, man, I'm not a chick. Come on. Is it the nut flush? No. I had jack 10 of spades in the big blinds, and it was a limped pot, I checked, and it come three spades. I won the pot though, it's pretty cool. Okay, I have a three of spades and two of clubs in the big blinds, and the blinds have gone up now to 100-200. Okay. We have a super big sharp over here. Okay, guys. Zuha777 has been playing very tight. Alright, so when he reshoves 21 big blinds, pretty certain he has a huge hand. And, uh, Do Andre calls behind. I would assume this is a strong hand, but Do Andre's been playing a lot of freaky hands, so I wouldn't be surprised if Do Andre had, like, a weak hand here. We're gonna fold, see what they'll have. But I suspect Zuha has like Ace King uh, and Jacks Plus. Yeah, pocket Queens. And Do Andre called with the King 10. Like I said, like I said, he's a crazy guy playing lots of hands. Do you see cards? 6 Attitude, 9. I should have 2 of Clubs and a 5 of Clubs. That's what you should be able to see right now. Yeah, okay, good. But, um, you guys, can you see how, like, I kind of just called out their hands? Like, everyone, sh everyone should be able to do that. Right, we had a tight player reshoving tight on big blinds. You know, it's, he must have a big hand, right? And we had, like, a, a really bad, loose kind of player calling off. You know, he had, like, a marginal hand, so. In a small spot at a different table, guys. Alright, we're gonna bring it up. Actually, no, it won't let us get some MTT. Never mind. Wow. 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 Alright, <laughs> I raised pre flop with pocket kings, and the flop came 7 king 8. I see that flop, he calls, turns a 6. He checks, I shove, and he calls me a 5 9, and I, I pretty much lose all my chips. And there's only 40 players left. Sorry. Oh, we have pocket jacks. What do we do here? What do we do here? Okay. This oh, this is a this is an instant reshove, guys. This is a reshove. Okay, we have um eight big blind stacks shoving under the gun. Okay, and we have a a ten big blind stack reshoving. 
So we've got to believe that ten big blind reshove is like it's, it's going to be hand like ace ten plus and like pocket sevens plus. So our jacks like play really well against um, against both hand ranges there. So it's a pretty easy call for the jacks. But it turns out Dark Doldy had pocket queens. So it's no good for us. Oh my gosh. Alrighty. Well that's that's injured us and chips, but never mind. We still have we still have fourteen big blinds. Yeah, Zuha, 777 made the best hands. You can do it! I was watching The Waterboy the other night. That reminds me of that guy. I was saying, you can do it! You can do it all night long! Alright, I'm in cashed in the short stack $5 thing. Lame. Right, queen eights can be folding. Alright guys, I have fourteen big blinds right now. So most of you know that this is a stack I don't want to be open raising with, I want to be looking to reshovel in. Okay. And just open shovel in and reshovel in. That's one that's my plan of this stack size. Ink player, what's up? Thank you for your kind words. Thank you very much. Feel a bit rusty. I do feel a bit rusty, but I still feel I feel good. I feel confident. But this is my first proper grinding session in a month or two now, and I've really enjoyed it so far. <clears throat> oh yes, I am ready for my fights. It's on Saturday, so. Not tomorrow, but the next day. And I'm ready. I am ready. Right now I'm resting, recovering. So I thought, you know, I'm resting, got nothing to do. I may as well play poker and have a grind, right? Have a grinding sesh. And that's what I've done, and it's been cool so far. Nine ten of spades. Very pretty. Not looking to play it from this position with this many chips. It's gonna get me in too much trouble. Okay, if I had 30 odd big blinds, then I'd be playing the sand, maybe. Even then, I wouldn't be playing it very often. Just an easy fold. We're gonna go down to this one. Let's see if this works. No. Damn it. Okay, let's stick to this one for the time being, guys. I should think about that 5-9 hands, it might pump me up. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I can think of more frustrating situations. I mean, I wish I could be as angry as I am sometimes. Well, I wish I could be as angry as I used to get when I used to play poker many years ago in this fight. So that would be awesome. But uh, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Too chilled out these days. Okay, the queen ten against the five six. Okay. 
Think about the W key pan. Good. Good one, Chili Pops. <laughs> Maybe I, I might just do that. Okay, 10-9. And Bam Bam Birdie raises. Uh, I'm not looking to reshove this spot. I'm just not looking to do it. If my 10-9 was suited, maybe I would consider it, because it gives me a little more equity. But, um, there's just there's not that much to be won in the middle right now. Well, compared to my stack, there is. I'm just not going to do it, guys. I'm not going to reach out this spot very often at all. But I will do it sometimes. Like this, just... Folds. Over here, we have Ace-King, and a button raise. So, going to be 3 betting that. It's 900. Which is just under three times the size of his raise. Right? Usually my three bet sizing is like two and a half times. But, um. Okay. They, the big blind calls me and Pavla calls me. Alright, I'm C betting this flop. Um. If Packet in shoves or Pavla shoves, then I, I guess I'm gonna fold. That's disgusting. Right, when Packet in flat calls a 3-bet, you know, then he has to have something really strong, right? Like, at least, he must have at least a pocket pair, right, or ace kick. It just has to be. It's just so ridiculously strong. So I'm just going to fold. Uh, this is the hand I want to show everyone. Uh, this is a fold on 5180 man, of course. Um, it's one I'm short stacked in. Blind on blind, I limped in here, okay? So I've limped in, blind and blind on my kings, trying to get him to shove me, because he's a really tight player. Um, so, I'm going to bet this flop, and hopefully he comes along. But he doesn't. So that sucks. Right, guys, that spot of the ace-king there, that's a really frustrating spot, and it happens quite a lot. Um, we're both deep, and like... A fishy a fish raises on the button and you three bet your ace king and you know you kind of know that he's going to call you and um, he's going to have position against you so that's why I like to raise a little bit more than usual that's why I, I raised it more than just two and a half times for a three bet I made it like almost three times for a three bet and there's argument for making it even more than three times the size of his total bet just just so that he's really paying the price for calling you have a weak hand out of position okay but when the big blind just like cold calls a three bet, like, hello, hang on a second, what's going on? You know, the big blinds pack it in when he cold called my three bet. That's the first hand we've seen him play. You know, so I have to give him credit for a big hands. You know, how often do you see that? Not very often, unless it's like a total fish. Alright, ace ten off suit, fourteen big blinds, tricky, tricky, tricky. Um, uh, nine big blinds. I mean, we have an M of nine. Ah, oh, I just time might folded. What flop would stop you from C betting the Ace King, or will you C bet no matter the flop? Bigfoot. There's a lot of flops I'm not going to C bet, especially when two players have called me. So the, the flops I'm going to be betting are like one high card, two low cards. I'm going to be betting all them flops. I'm not going to be betting flops like 7-8 jack, like 8-9 like queen, you know, like, like jack, mm, jack, you know, like jack 9, jack 9 twos and stuff, I'm not going to bet c bet either. You know, but I'm betting most, well I'm not betting most flops actually, that's a lie. Um, I'm probably betting less flops than than, than more flops in, in that spot when two players call me. Because it's so likely one of them has something. And expect pack it in is like, you he's, he almost has to have something. Alright, 10 jack off suit. This is a kind of a better spot to reshovel in. And I'm going to do it here. Against the button open, we have 14 bigs. Um, he could be folding for sure. 
So uh, this, is, this is a really standard spot to reshuffle, in my opinion. Sanjak offsuit is kind of weak, but um, this guy's going to fold a bunch. Right, especially how he's, he's got like, loads of chips. He's playing 16-16, tight aggressive player. I have just enough chips to make him fold. And you're going to see I fold a lot. And then if he does call us, then Jack-10 usually doesn't play so bad. So um, right there we picked up 700 and something chips. And it's a lot better than... It was a much better spot than shoving the 9-10 offsuit that I was debating earlier. Okay, so that's but that that reshove is a lot more likely to work. Alright, turn for off. I'm gonna fold on a blind. Would you shove Ace Ten off suit in later position with 14 big blinds? Yes, Blue Smarty for sure. I definitely would. Um, I actually time timed out. I was thinking what to do, and I actually timed out. I think shoving would have been fine. I think there were six players behind me, and I had the Ace Ten, 14 big blinds. So it's a really close one. It is really close indeed. Um, as there was no antis though, I, 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 I think folding is best. So that's a close spot. Alright. Um, so over here I have Ace-10 suited, blind and blind. Now, I'm not going to shove here guys. I'm just going to raise the two and a half times to be blind. And try and get him to reshove against me with like a worst hand. Yeah? And he does, he does shove me, so we snap cool. He has ace three and he wins. Um, never mind. Right, ace king up here. So you have an under the gun raise. You have sixteen big blinds. Okay, easy shove, right? But this guy, Zuha seven 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 is a tight player. So I kind of know I'm going to get called right now by like a strong strong hands. So hopefully he's going to call me with like ace queen. That'd be pretty sweet. Okay, folded. Um, so that hand, the ace-10 suited, guys. If I would have just shoved, I think he would have called me with the ace-3 anyway. But I like to raise that spot, okay? Because I like raising because a lot of the time, blind and blind, they're going to reshuffle in against you with with a very wide range of hands. So I think it's better to raise and call a shove rather than just to open shove the ace-10 suited. I think we're going to make more money when we just raise it and then call a shove. Bigfoot, for a tight player, he's been playing very loose since we've been watching. Yes, yes, he has. To give you an example of how tight this player is, I have f over 400 hands on him, and he plays 8 and 6. 8 and 6, over 400 hands. Come on, that's like... Man, I... Oh, that hurt me to do that. Alright, Queen 10 off with 17 bigs. I'm gonna fold this spot, guys. Yeah, it's, it's kind of tempting to steal right now, but I'm not going to do it with 17 bigs. I'm just going to fold. Yeah, that is extremely tight. And it's... Yeah, I think it's just for $4.50 180s. I don't actually remember ever playing with this guy, but apparently I have. I've played lots of him. So, 8 and 6 is extremely tight. Right, we're down to 4 tables, you guys. We need to win one. We're down to 4. Only in the sit and go. Yeah, I think so. I think it's just four dollar fifty one eighties. Might have played with him in a few MTTs. Not quite sure. The four hundred hands, eight and six. Yeah, the four hundred four hands. Um, it's just the total of amount of hands I have on him. Like, they can be from anywhere. They can be from cash games, sitting goes, MTTs. But I only play sitting goes and MTTs, so 
They're definitely from four. They're either from four dollar fifty one eighty mans or an MTT. So them stats are always going to be like pretty much the same. You play the same as you do in an MTT in a one eighty man. So them stats eight and six over four hundred hands. Got to believe they're very close to his real stats. Like very tight. Aim to fold and bam bam birdie. Okay, bam bam birdie, guys, has a ton of chips and is playing very loose. Very loose, bad poker game. Very loose, passive poker game. So, looking to play pots with him, looking to get in situations with him, for sure. But with 17 big blinds, I'm kind of limited to do that. I can't exactly steal his blind with speculative hands. So I just don't have enough chips to do so. I kind of have to accumulate more chips before I can start doing that. Yeah, you wouldn't assume a player that tight would be making much money, but I'm not sure. You know, I would assume that he doesn't make a lot. But who knows? You know, it'd be interesting to check it out. But to take a guess, I would guess like he has a small ROI, very small ROI winning player. Um, okay, pretty much a no-brainer situation over here. We have a very loose player. 33 and 33 of 18 hands raising under the gun, and this guy shoves all in. They're both extremely loose. So ace king, this is like a a no brainer for sure. Like everyone should be getting this in, not having to think about it at all. Yay, we got him crushed. Bad turn card. Good river cards. Okay, cool. Over here, okay, over here, guys, over here. I raise the cutoff with Ace Five suited, and th I get three calls. Like three of them call me, and we have a super short stack over here. This guy called my raise, seven big blinds, and the big blind is quite short himself too. And we get that flop where it's kind of like, hmm, okay, what do I do? Sometimes I check these flops, and sometimes I bet them. Okay, when we have top pair. Multi-way with a weak kicker. It's kind of it's always a gross spot, right? But um, as this guy's so short, he only has 542 chips. I'm just gonna bet like 541, just to mix it up a little bit. Um, what this bet says to the other guys is, you know, these other guys, when I bet enough to put this small stack all in, they kind of must know that I have something, you know, because it's unlikely I'm gonna I'm gonna bet bet this guy all in if I don't have anything, right? And uh, I get check raised. Oh, gosh. Yeah, okay, you guys, I'm folding this. I'm folding. Um, I'm definitely folding this. It does suck, okay, but I'm folding this. This guy is a tight player, right? So this is why I'm folding. Sometimes you may think, hmm, what should I do? Should I just call? But as this guy's a tight player, it's a really easy fold for me. But if he was like a... a a loot lag aggressive player it'd be a tough spot but I think I'd still fold the reason is is because if I call this bet if I call this bet it's 550 more chips to me okay if I call this bet there's going to be 3300 chips in the middle it's going to I'm going to have a pot sized bet left on the turn okay and there's no way he's just going to check the turn and check the river you know he's, he's 9 times out of 10 he's going to put a bet on the turn you know he's going to put a bet on the turn which will commit us to the river so we're gonna fold, and he shows us he shows us a set of sixes. So thank you, Montlevich, for teaching us for teaching us. Well, he didn't really teach us. I, I kind of like he showed us why we should fold in that spot. Yeah, so that's cool. Right up here, Queen Jack Offsy. I'm gonna reshovel in. Okay, Bam Bam Birdie is raising. Oh, okay. So I shoved on him and he calls me with 10 6. And he wins. Wow. 
gosh. Alright, that was a really cool spot for um, a reshove. I had 15 big blinds. He's, he's raising super wide in late position. It's a perfect spot. But he called me anyway with 10 six of hearts. <laughs> and he won. So, it's just not to be. Never mind. We're down to three, guys. We're down to three. And we have pocket eights in this one over here. So, see if we can win some monies. Alright, we have this player raising from early position. Min raise, I'm calling this for sure with 8s. We're both deep, he has 30 bigs, I have over 30 bigs. I'm calling with 8s, I'm calling with any pocket pair. Just a set mine. Alright, we both have enough chips to be able to do so. And there's plenty of players behind that could also call. Okay, so definitely calling here to try and set mine. <coughs> Folding to C bets. When it comes 4-4 four, four queen and he bets, guys, I'm just going to fold the 8s. There's a chance my hand could be good, but another reason I'm folding is because we still have a guy to act behind us. And we don't know what he's going to do. Okay? So I'm going to fold. If I call and then the guy behind me calls, then I'm like, it, and I'm in, a, I'm in a world of hurt. It makes my it makes my my decision making on the turn a lot harder. So just fold, just fold to a C-bet on the flop. And, uh... That's a pretty interesting way to play the third nuts on the turn. <laughs> wow. Okay, ace 10 suited. Alright. Let's have a look at the stack sizes behind me. Okay, looking at the stack sizes behind me, I'm going to play this hands, coming from min raise. Now, ace 10 suited under the gun plus one isn't always a raise, but given my stack size and given everyone, everyone else's stack size, I'm going to opt to raise. I believe that um, there's a lot of players that can call me and I can end up playing uh, a decent sized pot with bad players. But Kodiak Jack 3 bets me. This he, this guy's a very loose player with a very high 3 bet percentage. So I could, in fact, have the best hands. But I'm going to fold. I'm not going to call 600, guys. The only, the only option for me here is if I'm going to shove or fold. And, uh, I'm just going to fold. I'll get my chance to take this guy's chips at a later stage. Um, okay, we're going to look at this one. Just for fun. This guy's short. He's shoving four big blinds under the gun. We have jack five of clubs. We're going to call. 400 into 1100. We're getting a good price. I'm actually in front. And we flop the nizzles. So, good game. Kiriman, what's up? Don't be sorry, dude. Do not be sorry. It's fine. Right, pocket threes. We have a short stack raising under the gun. We have pocket threes. Now this, guys, I'm not going to call. You see how I called on the other table with the pocket eights? But right now, I'm just going to fold my pocket threes. Okay, because this guy doesn't have a lot of chips that I could win. Like, the risk-reward ratio isn't big enough. I'm going to call 259 chips here, and I'm going to miss. I'm not going to hit a set. Like, I'm going to hit my three one in seven times. Yeah? And I'm not going to, you know, when I do hit a three, like, I'm... I'm usually going to get a stack, but it's not a big enough stack for me to to, to win, to make it profitable, to call, to, to make that call profitable, if that makes sense. Okay, six for off, folding on the button. You know, it's going to cost me 260 chips, and he only has, what, like, two, two and a half thousand chips behind? So, this just... You know, I'm gonna miss so often when I do get when I, times I do get all this money all in, yeah, but it's, I'm still not gonna be profitable for me. Right, pocket twos on the button again against an under the gun raise, a very loose bad player again. Okay, and he has a lot of chips, so we're gonna call and we flop a set. Would you look at that? 
Would you look at that? This is a very wet board, guys. I I imagine I'm getting action on this flop. Okay. Okay, Kodiak Jack bets out for 800. Guys, now, kind of, I don't mind shoving here, but because this guy's such a bad fish, I believe he could have, have absolutely anything. So, um, I'm just going to flat call, get it in on any turn. Yeah. Because I think he could be bluffing. He's that bad and that crazy that he could just be bluffing. So I'm just going to call. And the spade on the turn isn't like the best card. Because it might slow him down a bit. But um, I'm going to I'm gonna have to shovel in now because like I don't have a... You know, I don't want to see one more spade in the river. So I'm just going to shove. And he calls us with... The eight nine of spades. Okay. 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 Man, just can't win today. How sick is this? Right, king nine suited again. Folds to us, obviously getting it in. Okay, the chances of him semi bluffing there are quite slim, and um, if I shove the flop, I think a fish like this is going to call me. So, like, being results orientated, yeah, I guess I could have shot the flop and things would have worked out better. But, um, I still like flat calling the flop. Again, this guy is so bad, he could literally be bluffing with only two cards. Okay, now the 4-5 beats us. Wow, you guys, we just can't win today. We just can't win. So, we're left in two tournaments. And, let's get this up. Okay, fold. Oh, la, la, la. oh well, you know what? Usually I run really well in live training sessions, so I guess I'm kind of due a bad run in live training sessions, right? So, uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. He's 10, okay. Raising blind up. I'll make it 400, guys. Usually I'd make it like 375, two and a half times. But because this guy's stuck in 130 chips, I'm going to raise a bit more just to try and price out the big blinds. Hey. <laughs> we chopped it. At least I profited a small amount of chips. Zed's dead. What stack size are you not calling with a pocket pair to set mine? Good question. It's not just my stack size, it's also our opponent's stack size. Okay, if I have a stack size of 30 big blinds, and my opponent has a stack size of 20 big blinds, Then I'm not going to be calling his, ra his raise. Okay, so right now I have 4,000 chips, 22 with blinds. Um, let's think of a better example. All right, this guy that's just shoved all in for 680 chips. If this guy had like three and a half thousand chips and he raised to 400, then I wouldn't be calling with a pocket pair. I wouldn't be calling with pocket twos. Yeah, if this guy had. 4,000 chips, which is 20 big blinds, and he made it 400, like a min raise, I wouldn't be calling with pocket twos. Yeah, I'm only looking to set mine when we both have more than 25 big blinds each. Yeah. That's the only time I can set mine. We both have more than 25 big blinds each. Preferably, we'd be even deeper. You know, 25 big blinds is like the bare minimum I would set mine with, for the most part. The reason that it's not good to just set mine all the time is because we're only going to hit that set one in seven times, right? Okay, AK Nepedus shoves all in again. We have pocket sevens. This is close. We're just going to look at the previous hands because I think this is his third shove all in in a row. But I run out of time, so I fold. 
But uh, I think folding that is fine anyway, to be honest with you. So it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, I did notice it was his third time in a row. Man, when I started my session today, everything looked really promising. I felt like I was going to have a nice, deep, good session. Never mind. He was going well in the MTTs. Time to change. Nah, I'm just going to play these two out. See what happens. Anyway, right before class, I had a phone call. And it was from a woman. And she said to me, Hello, Chris. I said, Hello, who's this? She said, um... <laughs> what did she said? Um, she said, Hey, how's your car window? Right, and... I was parking my car the other day, two or three nights ago, parking my car, and as I was reversing to park on the pavement, my back window smashed, and, but you know, it was a proper big smash, made a really loud noise, sounded like a gunshot, I was in the car with the engine on at the time, it petrified me, so um, I ran my insurance company, we got it fixed, and I told no one about it, you know, apart from like my family, but everyone else had no idea about it. So then this girl rings me up today, she's like, hey Chris, I'm like, hi, who's this? She's like, hey, how's your car window? I'm like, what? How do you know about that? I've told no one. She's like, yeah, it's me, I did it. So, um, hopefully she will call back after class and I'll get to find out who, who did this to my window. Yeah, sorry for the random story, guys. Um. Yeah, it's not nice, you know, someone may have smashed my window in. I don't deserve that, I'm not a nice guy. Yeah, weird. I don't know why, and I have no idea. But um, sounds like a quite a childish girl. Like, she had a friend in the background, and like, they were giggling. So, and they... <laughs> It wasn't the date, come on. It wasn't because of the date I had. It wasn't her, I can assure you it wasn't her. That date went quite well. Um, no, it wasn't her. At least I think it's not her. Oh man. I can't win a showdown against Jack 4 with like King High. I'm really not running well today. Uh, la, 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 la. 8 4 suited on the button. Not gonna raise this, guys. It's not folded to me anyway. Okay, but if it was folded to me, I'm not looking to raise here. I'm not looking to steal the blinds with this garbage hands because look at the big blinds. He has 11 big blinds. He's desperate to go all in. And in his brain, if he has one, he's also thinking, okay, I have a good reshove stack size. So a lot of players these days will just reshove your button raises with a stack like this with a very wide range of hands. So that's why. It's not a good idea just to steal but steal the blinds. You've, you, <coughs> you've really got to pay attention to the stack sizes behind you. Okay. okay if it was folded to me here, I'd be raising the king 10. Uh, Phil Z raises, so we're going to get out of there. I don't know how she knows my phone number. I have no idea. She obviously knows me from somewhere. She knows me from somewhere. Yes. Very strange. It's very frustrating, right? Because my back window, I had to pay I had to pay a seventy five pound excess fee. And I'm pretty sure that'll increase my insurance premiums as well, because I had to make a claim. But I was you know, I I thought maybe that I had a chip in the windscreen that I wasn't aware of. And it just ended up smashing that way. But it's just really funny how I told no one about the smashed window. And then she's like, hey, it was me. Because didn't, I didn't see any stones or anything that, that could have been chucked at it. Time to watch Basic Instincts. Scotland Yards. I don't know what any of these things are. I don't know what any of these films are. <laughs> Jack 
for a bullet hole in the back of your car seat. My God, I was sat there and I, you know, it was loud. <coughs> Excuse me. It was loud. You know, it made me jump. It sounded like a bullet shot. But obviously it wasn't. I don't live in a ghetto, guys. Okay, I live in a quite a nice area. It's not a... I don't have, like, kids running around with weapons and stuff. Autoglass. Yes, it was actually autoglass that came to repair it for me. But yeah, the car was left there overnight with a smashed-in window, so I covered it up with some weird material stuff, and the wetness still got inside my car, so even when the, the glass was fixed, I got in my car and it just smelled of, like, dry rain, you know, just really disgusting. It still smells in there now. Alright, aka Shubs. 14 big blinds, we're going to fold the 7-8. I'd be calling hands there like King-Queen. King-Jack is eh, maybe against some players, but King-Queen I'm going to be calling against pretty much everybody these days. Some players I'll be folding against, but most players I'll be calling. I've got to watch Fatal Attraction. Alright, I'll YouTube it. I will YouTube it. Okay, 10 6 offsuit on the button. So now the blinds have slightly more chips. So now I could try to steal the blinds, but as the blinds are only 100 200 and I have such a garbage hand, I'm not looking to do it. You know, just no point. I don't, 300 chips isn't a big deal for my stack. You know, it's just not a big deal at all. I, I don't care for 300 chips. So just fold. It's just too likely I'm going to get action with, you know, I'm going to have 10 high. Um, I don't have many chips myself, I only have just under 20 big blinds. Ah, okay, we're down to one table. This little table of mine. We're gonna make it shine. Hopefully. 28 out of 44 right now. A6 offsuit, guys. Five players behind me, I'm fold. Wickeds. Chris, what's your min range for re-stealing in late position? Good question. Um, let me think about it. Let me think about it. If the stack sizes and everything is right for it and everything's good for it, then then you know it can be extremely wide. It could be like any any two. Like I wouldn't do. I don't know. I don't really have a set range. Like I prefer to re-steal with hands that have a lot of equity, like suited connectors. You know, I love sh I love re-stealing with them hands. And Ace X hands, I love re reshoving it in as well with because it's like an ace blocker. And um, and it's, it's um. If I feel that the spot is absolutely perfect for a reshove and I'm sure it's going to work like most of the time, then then the the range is is very very wide. You know, it could be like it's not. I don't really have a set range. You know, it's just like it could literally be any two cards, right? Um, okay. For, all right, all right, all right. For 15 to 20 big blinds, that, that makes things a lot easier. For when we have 15 to 20 big blinds, my reshoving range is is like, when I'm when I'm reshoving 20 big blinds, it's 20 big blinds. I tend to reshove my 20 big blind reshoves tend to be a bit tighter. They tend to be legit hands. Yeah. 
whereas my 15 big blind shoves, 14, 15 big blind shoves tend to be like weakish kind of hands because I'm desperate for chips. Alright, I just flopped top pair, so I'm checking this flop against an under the gun limp. And my plan is to check call, but when he bets 600, my plan is to now go all in. I'm going all in because he could be bluffing with nothing. <laughs> bluffing with nothing. <laughs> okay. And, uh, yeah, he could call me with like a pair of sevens or pair of eights. So, check shove. And he has pocket jacks. Okay. Okay, good game. Good games. Very good games. So that's us. We are done. We are eliminated out of everything. So, not a good day. I made the money in one tournament. Uh, but Wicked76. My range for reshoving, it varies from different player to different player. I don't have a set range for reshoving against, against people. It's like it changes, you know? But hands that really entice me to reshove are hands like King Queen suited and Jack Ten suited and Nine Ten suited. So let's just say we have a tag player, okay? Raising middle position, okay? He's still he's he's stealing like just on about average, you know. He's stealing once every other orbit, once an orbit. Then my my reshub range is going to be quite tight, you know. It's going to be like King Queen suited and stuff uh, and pocket pairs. But against maybe someone that's playing a bit on the looser side of a tag, like he's he's raising twice in orbit, maybe, then I'll be shoving a wide range. I'll be shoving hands like 7-8 suited. With like 15 type of blinds, I'll be shoving hands like 7-8 suited and any pocket pair, right? And ace x suited and stuff. It's just, it, it depends. It varies from situation to situation. It's a really hard question to answer. What would be really good is if like... Soon I can do a replay video of a tournament I've got really deep in, uh, or someone else has got really deep in, and we'll look for spots to reshove. That's a really good way of kind of of like learning like when's good to reshove, because it's hard to just sit here and be like, yeah, I would reshove this this hand in particular against this kind of player. It's really hard, but you've just you gave me a really good idea for a video. So I think I think we should do a video on that actually. I think that'd be a pretty cool video. Maybe I can do like a review session with one of my tournaments or somebody else's and instead of reviewing the session we could just look for reshove spots. So I think that'd be really helpful to a lot of guys. So yeah, I think we're gonna do that. That's awesome. Anywho, guys, yeah, class is done. My time here is done. My time at PokerStars today is finished. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. But thank you guys for coming along. Thank you very much. It's been a good class. Full of good questions. Sorry, guys, if I seem a bit excited today or anything like that. It's just because, uh, yeah, it's fight day in two days and starving hunger right now. I have to cut weight and stuff and I'm just... Ugh. But yeah. Thank you everybody and good luck at the tables everybody. Okay? And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>